Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our uh, practical uh, research practical research class. So for today's meeting, we are going to talk about uh, now we're going to talk about the differences between a qualitative research and a quantitative research. Like in the previous discussions, may pahapyaw na on the discussions of both, but this time we'll talk about it thoroughly as you try to understand what this research is all about. When, when you say research, again, there are uh, important designs that you have to understand, which will help you later on in uh, uh, hopefully answering those questions that you are going to be able to do in your research. So I hope uh, everyone is doing great. So let's start now our discussion. Let me just share a screen. Okay, so it's qualitative and uh, quantitative research. Uh, this is actually module number three already. The first module talks about the introduction of what research is. The second, uh, we, we try to discuss the processes, the importance of research, and even uh, the ethics of doing research. I'd like to put emphasis on uh, uh, when, when you create your research, I think there are three important things that you have to be able to remember. Or um, I made mention that like in the Rotary Club, the Rotary Club is a, uh, an organization here in the Philippines, very famous for uh, the programs and projects they have for uh, community development and many others. So we have the uh, four-way test in doing a research. Again, I will repeat this one. The first is it has to be interesting. You have to make sure that your research is within your interest. It's something that you like. And that's why in uh, the five topics that I will be asking you to submit later on, it must be something that you like. And I will ask you of around five topics of which I have to be able to later on approve one from uh, one out of those five topics that you have submitted, you have to make sure that they are very specific. Let's say, if you'd like to be able to have a topic about science, what about science? Medyo ma, ano yun? Uh, marami, you know, when you talk about science, when I say marami, there are so many things that, uh, there's so many topics about science. What in particular in science? Is it about biology? No, is it all about uh, geography? Is it all about psychology? And from psychology, meron pa yung mga, uh, mga other subtopics. So it must be interesting. The second one uh, is that it has to be feasible, meaning it can be executed, meaning it is researchable. Meaning it is within uh, the bounds of reality, no? Makatotohanan yung gagawin mong research. I made an example before that let's say you are uh, proposing a topic on studying aliens. It, it, it might be difficult because it's not feasible. Where will you get participants? Um, will you be getting participants who have seen the aliens? Uh, medyo that's that's kind of difficult and hard. The third one is you talk about um, it, you you must have uh, the proper uh, no the third one is that it must add to the body of knowledge, meaning it's something new, it's something unique. It's not uh, a research that has been done already. Hindi yung research na uh, inulit ulit, and you can actually see that. Now, the best way to uh, example, you you are really interested in this particular research. Nakita mo to sa iba. Uh, you cannot actually copy it, but you might want you might be interested to look at the recommendations of that research, and from the recommendations, bakakakaisik ka later on of a particular topic that you can actually do. Uh, in connection to that particular research. You're not copying it, but you're trying to um, 
do a research based on the recommendation of a previous research. And the fourth one, um, it, it, it must, meaning you, you have to be trained. Okay, the proper training, the proper training uh, of uh, doing research is very important. Your skills, training and skills are very important. Now, without these abilities and skills, you would end up uh, not being able to do your research. You will end up um, submitting nothing in uh, your research. You end up not being able to submit requirements on time. So skills uh, and the proper training, of course, your, your professor is going to be able to teach you those proper skills and training. Okay, let's go back now to qualitative and uh, quantitative research. Now, when we talk about uh, different types of research, it's, it's based on different aspects, such as what's the purpose, the process, and the outcome. Again, when you talk about the types of research, we talk about the purpose, the process, and the outcome. Now, in these types of research, there are categories particularly in the category of the purpose. First is, it's a descriptive research, analytical research, exploratory research, and the predictive research. You might, want, you, you might be thinking right now, uh, uh, sir, do, do we have to learn all of this one? Yes, it's theoretical. These are nice to know things, but will not be able to require you later on in the quizzes because again, I told you earlier in the discussions that research is output-based. So anything from the quizzes, the examinations, and other activities will all be based on the outputs that you're going to be able to submit. So descriptive research, analytic, exploratory, predictive. Let's talk about descriptive research. Now, it's very lengthy here. Fact-finding inquiries of different kinds such as the what, why, when, who, how, and all. And the very main aim of this research is descriptions of characteristics of a phenomena at present. Ito, ito talaga yung pang-qualitative research, no? Has no control over the variable, only have to report what is happening or what has happened. Normally, in a qualitative research, pag-descriptive, we don't talk about the variables, but we talk about the concepts, the concepts of uh, uh, the research that you're going to be able to do. Uh, you use frequencies, average, and other statistical calculations. So this can also be in statistics because it's a part ng quantitative, may part dun na descriptive. Primarily, for example, in the use of demographics, pwede ka mag-descriptive dun. So hindi rin may iwasan yan. Now, the method used by these researchers involve a survey method of all kinds, including the comparative and correlational method. So itong comparative correlational uh, method, these are methods that is being done in a quantitative research. Now, the periodic table categorizes the elements is an example of a descriptive research. Now, we move on to the analytical research. Now, mainly carrying out the analysis of a phenomena which involves secondary data. Ito yung mga, when you talk about secondary data, these are data you get from the internet, from, uh, from news, from magazines, from uh, descriptions made by, by, by people. And uh, the very aim of this research is try to understand the phenomena by discovering and measuring the casual relations among them. Here, you as a research, you might want to use the facts or information readily available uh, in order to analyze or to make a critical evaluation of the context of your research. Now, it works within the constraints of the variables. It also tries to explain existing state of affairs from available data. Young variables, and we will talk about it later deeply. And how can the absentee rate among employees be reduced? This is an example of a research question. It is an example of an analytical research. And we have the exploratory research. It's conducted about a research problem when there are a few or no earlier studies to refer to. 
Now, the focus on uh, gaining insights and familiarities for later investigation or undertaken when problem are in a preliminary stage of investigation. So normally, yan, uh, itong exploratory research, you, you do this one in a quantitative uh, research. Okay? Uh, gathers preliminary information that will help to define a problem and suggest a hypothesis. Pang ano to? Uh, pang uh, more of the ex experimental research. It commonly used unstructured interview. It involves generation of new ideas, assumption, and see here, development of tentative theories or hypotheses. And we have the predictive research. It studies determine the frequency with which something occurs or it's associated with something else. Uh, diagnostic research. A research must be able to define clearly what he wants to measure and must find adequate method for measuring along with clear-cut definition of population he wants to study. Now, the statistical use in this research design includes regression, linear regression, logistic regression. So nakita nyo dito, make use of statistical tools. So primarily, a predictive research is quantitative in the very nature. The major areas in which predictive diagnostic research design use include, it can be in business, marketing, clinical setting, government agency, and all. Now, we now proceed with the different categories or the processes of a research. So we have qualitative research and quantitative research. In a qualitative research, again, we have to go back and hopefully try to understand this uh, process. It is handled with qualitative phenomena that inc includes quality or kind. The quality, again, or kind. The research design is to find out how people feel or what people think are coming under re this research. Again, it makes use of the five senses. It's important in behavioral sciences. Um, its aim is to discover the underlying motives of human behavior through detailed description. Now, the data is in the form of words, pictures, objects, and all. So be reminded of that. In a quantitative research, based on measurement of quantity or amount. Now, it can only be expressed in terms of quantity. Now, a researcher used tools such as questionnaire or equipment to collect data, and all aspects of the study are carefully designated before data is collected. Now, here, data is in the form of numbers, statistics, and this data is more efficient and you are able to test it. So meron ditong hypothesis. Now, based on my research on the outcome, there are two researches, the applied or action research or the fundamental or the basic or the pure research. Uh, kung kayo, ang gagawin natin is the fundamental, basic, or the pure research. Itong normally itong applied research, this are researches being done by teachers, because when you talk about action research, these are um, answers to immediate problems being, uh, being experienced by, let's say, teachers. So let's talk about applied research, or which is, uh, again, you talk about an action research used to answer a specific question, solve a specific problem, or to gain better understanding also known as the action research, aims at finding solution for immediate problem. It's now ko kanina, no? facing a society or an or organization. It is designed to solve a problem of modern world that acquire knowledge. The domain goal of applied scientists is to improve the human condition, for example, treat or cure a specific disease. Now, um, fundamental or the basic or the pure research, which... Uh, is our main focus because you'll be doing your thesis. This research is concerned with generalization and formulation of a theory. This is done for the intellectual pleasure on learning and it has no commercial value attached to discovery that result from the basic research. No, this is, again, uh, intellectual pleasure on learning. 
to add to the body of knowledge. This type of research has limited direct applications, but in which researcher has careful control over the research setting. Now, this would involve collection and analysis of the data to develop or enhance theory and have an understanding of the theoretical relationships between the variables. Now, these are some of the other types of researchers or researches or what researchers are doing. Some of them, they do the one-time research or the longitudinal research, the field setting research, laboratory research, or the simulation research. You also have the clinical research no? being done by the medical doctors, a historical research, the conceptual research, and uh, we have the empirical research completely based on experiences or uh, observations. So we have to keep in mind that when we talk about uh, the processes of research, which is the qualitative and the quantitative research, a qualitative research generally deals in, again, words, images, and subject. Yan, paulit-ulit sinasabi dito, very evident yan with qualitative. And in a quantitative research, it generally deals in numbers, logic, and uh, objective. Uh, excuse me, swear why. Okay. So very basic that we have to keep in mind. Let's proceed with the next slide. And in the types of data, um, qualitative, quantitative, qualitative, it was a great fun. So you're, you're trying to describe an emotion that you actually would feel, no? Quantitative, um, discrete or continuous, okay? So you have discrete, you can count it, continuous, ito yan, it's an example. Uh, qualitative data, uh, you see here descriptions and words and the other one, numbers. So in the classification of a research design and the process, you have two, the quantitative design and the qualitative design. So in a quantitative design, you can either do the experimental or non-experimental. Later on in your practical research too, you will appreciate this one. Pero as of now, parang, uh, parang you have a big question mark on top of your head saying, what, well, what is this professor telling us? So again, quantitative design, experimental, and the non-experimental. So when you say experimental, it could be the true experimental, quasi-experimental, or the pre-experimental. So in a true experimental design, you conduct pre-test and post-test, and you control the design. And you have the post-test only control the group design. But normally, you do the quasi-experimental. Quasi non-equivalent control group design and the time series design. And the pre-experimental, you have the one-shot case study, one group pre-test, post-test design. And you have the non-experimental, which is descriptive in nature. So you do the survey, correlational, ex post facto studies, comparative, evaluative, and the methodological. And of course, the ones that we are studying currently is a qualitative design. So you could either do the phenomenological uh, study, the ethnographic study, the grounded theory, and I missed here the case study, which is all part of this qualitative design. So yeah, we, we should not be able to forget this one. Okay, now in qualitative, quantitative, again, quantitative, my hypothesis, all beans are alike. So null, no beans are different. The method, you count the beans for you to be able to determine it. In qualitative, what is a bean? And what does it mean to be a bean? So method, examine the beanness in the field. So kita mo yung differences, no? yung isa, bibilangin mo para talaga malaman mo yung, yung bean na yan. But in qualitative, you have to describe the essence or the beanness. Okay? Galing, no? kakaiba, the beanness. Let's proceed. Now, how would you dis distinguish the characteristics of quantitative and qualitative research? So again, ito na naman tayo. Qualitative data deals with descriptions. The data can be observed but not measured. So later on, I will be able to determine even in, your, uh, in, in the titles that you will create, ay, hindi pwede yan. No? It's not qualitative. Okay? 
uh, the color, texture, smells, taste, appearance, beauty, and etc. Qualitative. You talk about quality. And quantitative data deals with numbers, data which can be measured, the length, height, area, volume, weight, speed, time, temperature, humidity, sound levels, cost, members, ages, etc. Quantitative quant quantity. Okay? So now we proceed with the purpose. For quantitative, you need to explain and predict to test, confirm, and validate the theory. Pag qualitative naman, again, you have to describe, you have to explain, you have to explore, and you have to interpret. And later on, you have to build theory. And in the processes for quantitative, it's focus. Deals with known variables. Use established guidelines. Statistic designs context-free objective. In qualitative, it's a holistic approach. The variables are not known. That's why we normally focus on concepts. Flexible guidelines. Emergent design. Meaning, ano yung mag-evolve out of those um, uh, uh, out of those things that the participants would say. It's subjective. Now, the form of reasoning, in quantitative, you do deductive analysis. From a general case theory to specific situations. In qualitative, you do inductive analysis. From specific situation to, uh, to focusing on a general case. Excuse me. Okay, descriptions of the findings. In quantitative, you present the numeral data, statistics, formal and scientific. In qualitative, the narrative description, the words, important quotations, the personal voice, the literary style that you will be doing. Okay, so in quantitative research, Research looks in the patterns in the numeric data. Doon mismo doon sa statistics in the numbers presented. Gathers data in numerical form which can be put into categories or measures in units or measurements. And this type of data can be used to construct graphs and tables. While in a qualitative research, uh, information that is not in numerical form and is typically descriptive data. Again, a descriptive data. When you think of qualitative data, think of the word again, in ulit, ulito, quality. Because in this analysis, we are taking a deep quality look at the phenomena. So examples, um, application forms, close-ended questionnaires, IQ tests, measurements. For qualitative research, you take a look at the diary accounts, the document review. Um, open-ended questionnaires, unstructured interviews, unstructured observations. And in terms of the purpose, in qualitative, you need to understand and interpret the social interactions, what is happening with them. In quantitative research, again, you have to test the hypothesis, look at the cause and the effect, and you have to make predictions. So, in a group study, qualitative, smaller, and non-randomly selected. Okay? So qualitative yan. Meaning, your participants are quite few. According uh, to Creswell, I made mention, there are relatively around 6 to 10 participants. But then again, that will depend on the approval of your advisor and the panel later on. Quantitative, larger, randomly selected. So normally, in qualitative, Purposive, ang sampling technique na gagamitin ninyo. Okay? We'll talk about those uh, techniques later on when we go into chapter 5 of the methods. So in the variables naman, between qualitative and quantitative, um, qualitative, the study of the whole and not the variables. That's why, again, we try to focus on the concepts and not the variables in quantitative specific variable study. And the type of data collected, qualitative, again, uulitin uli, I think this is the third time, words, images, or objects, and quantitative numbers and statistics. 
Okay, forms of data collected, okay, quality. Qualitative data such as open-ended responses, interpreters, observation, field notes, and reflections. Qualitative, yeah. Now, in the quantitative, the data are based on the precise measurements using structured validated data collection instruments. Instruments that has been validated. Okay, so quality and quantity. Now, let, let, let's talk about the role of uh, the researcher. So in, in a qualitative research, here the researcher and their biases may be known to participants in the study and participant characteristics may be known to the researcher. It's very obvious though because sometimes in qualitative, you, you really have to set aside uh, certain biases that you're not connected really to the study that you're conducting. It's a very obvious yun later on at makikita yun. In quantitative, research and their biases are not known to the participants in the study and participants' characteristics are deliberately hidden from the researcher. Double blind studies. Meaning ito, very obvious in the quantitative, no? You, you can't be biased because you are all basing this one on uh, measurements and statistics. And the numbers and the statistics will not, will, will not lie. Okay? Walang biases doon because it's very exact. Okay? And uh, in terms of the results between the two, uh, designs in qualitative, particularly or especially findings that is less generalizable, while pag quantitative generalizable findings that can be applied to other populations. Okay, and in the final report for qualitative, the narrative report. Okay, yung yung report niyo yung I was saying this one, like uh, ano ani yung mga sinabi ng mga participants mo na na-code mo na yon at na-categorize mo na yun into themes in answering those uh, research questions. Okay? So yon ang mga sagot nila, you're going to put it into the narrative report later on. Okay? Uh, parang ikukwento mo yon that uh, based on uh, what the participants uh, uh, said, majority of them, ganito, but a couple of them said that blah, blah, blah. And quantitative research, statistical report with correlations, comparisons, or means or statistical significance or of findings. Siyempre, yung results yung yung statistics, no? you have to be able to show it. Plus the fact that when you do your final report in both qualitative and quantitative, you have to make sure that you have to quote, go back to your review related literature okay? and uh, be able to substantiate. Nyari, the results itself says like this one, uh, to further solidify your result, you have to quote a uh, literature to say that uh, uh, indeed uh, the finding is is true. Okay. So what is to be observed in qualitative? Qualitative behavior, complexities, quantitative quantities, scales, and the trends. So what are the types of questions being asked in qualitative? Normally, the why and the how. Okay, yun lang, why and how. And in quantitative, how many and the what. So makikita rin yan in the formulation of your research questions, whether it's qualitative or quanti. Okay? How are the questions uh, Questions are put? Methods. In qualitative, you the document review, the artifacts, uh, participants, uh, participant observations, the interview, focus group, and even the workshops. Quantitative, the application forms, the questionnaires, the IQ test or the test or the measurements. So how the results are interpreted, are, are analyzed. So in qualitative, you try to explore, you explain, understand, you, you, you show the narrative, particularly mainly the inductive reasoning and conclusions can be drawn from evidence no matter how incomplete. And quantitative, you have to describe, measure, predict, and statistical tables and charts and the universal, mainly deductive reasoning. Everything is known before conclusions can be drawn. So these are the characteristics. Okay. Uh, mentioned the discussion earlier, so we'll skip with this one. So examples of quality, quantitative data, let's say an oil painting, qualitative data. You see the descriptions here. No, it's blue, green color, gold frame, smells old, it's musty. In quantitative data, you use numbers. Picture is 
10 inches by 14 inches with a frame of 14 inches by 18 inches, and etc. Okay, the key differences no, of qualitative quantitative data, okay, the data type in which the classification objects is based on attributes quality is called qualitative data, and the data which can be counted and expressed in numbers and values is called quantitative data. Yeah, I think this was made mention earlier in, in the slide. Okay, ganun rin to. The how, yung mga questions, no? Uh, if it's why and how question, that would, that would be for qualitative. For quantitative, you talk about the why. Okay. okay, so that's qualitative research. Let's focus on this one. A method of inquiry employed in uh, many different academic disciplines, the in social sciences, but it can also be done in the market research. Okay, the human behavior, decision making. Okay. So popularity comes from the economical, flexible, opens the door to the why and the how, richness of the data, best uh, start with the question. Okay. I think, ito, inulit na lang to. Okay, the role of qualitative research, the outcome to improve conceptualization, clarify research design, including data collection approach. Okay, starts by questions like, how do people feel while living under occupation? How can a teacher use principles from behaviorist psychology to help a student with autism in an elementary school? So how? So the key features of qualitative research, the collection of primarily of the data, okay, through observations. You explore the research question and you do inductive reasoning from more specific kinds of statement to the general ones. And fo focus on the human subjectivity, okay? Participants attach events and the people give to their lives and the reflex research design may need to be reconsidered or modified in response to new developments. And you have to be in a sensitivity to the subject role of the researcher. Okay, so there are strengths no, of a qualitative research, provide the rich data, useful for investigating complex and sensitive issues, um, explain uh, the phenomena. Okay? For example, no, you can do a qualitative research on, wa on, on how, why are Filipinos uh, into into beauty pageants, no? There must a phenomena behind that. Bakit ba baliw na baliw ang mga mga Filipinos when you talk about uh, beauty pageants? Of course, there are limitations as well. Can be very time consuming, generate a huge amount of data, which is very true. The analysis can be difficult because of the amount of data and no clear clear strategy for analysis. Ni naman there, there are strategies, no? Uh, you have to be author specific. Interpretation of data may be subjective. Okay, okay. so this table would somehow uh, present to you uh, the different um, types of qualitative research from the narrative, feminology, ground theory, ethnography, and case study. Hindi ka mention yung narrative because um, Although uh, it's not quite popular compared to the other four, uh, which is feminology, ground theory, ethnography, and case study, pero in include ko na yan dito. So if your focus is narrative, you explore the life of individual, feminology, and understanding the essence of experiences about the phenomena, and ground theory, developing a theory grounded from data in the field, and ethnography, describing and interpreting a cultural or social group, in a case study, developing an in-depth analysis of a single case, meaning one organization or a multiple case study, meaning several of it. In a data collection of a narrative, interviews and documents, feminology, long interviews with up to 10 people. And in a grounded theory, interviews with 20 or 30 individuals. Okay. Uh, Satcher categories and detailed a theory. Ito sinasabing saturation na to. Pag dumating na doon sa point na pare-parehas lang sinabi ng mga participants mo, you have to stop. And that is saturation. 
primarily uh, observations interviews with additional artifacts during extended time in the field, six months to a year. So in ethnography, eh, pero may iba namang author that would say, you have to immerse yourself in the data for three to six months. Multiple sources for case study, including documents, archival records, interviews, observation, and physical artifacts. So, ito pa yung iba. So, data analysis for narrative, stories, epiphanies, historical content, feminology statements, meanings, meaning themes, general description of the experience. Uh, for the grounded theory, you'll be doing open coding, actual coding, selective coding, conditional uh, matrix. And then for the ethnography, description analysis, interpretation. And for the case study, do description themes and assertion. And in the narrative form, for narrative, detailed picture of an individual's life, feminology, description of the essence of the experience, ground the theory, theory or theoretical model. Uh, here for uh, the ethnographic description of the culture, behavior of a group or individual, and in depth, and for case study, in depth case, uh, in depth study of a case or cases. So this would somewhat summarize, no? what each of the type of qualitative research is all about. Mahalaga to. This is very important. Now, how to get the qualitative data? I think Anna Mig mentioned it no? but just uh, for a recap of it, interviews, one-on-one -on -one conversation that go, in, go uh, deep into the topic at hand. For example, case studies, collection of client stories from in-depth interviews. You can also have expert opinions, high quality information from well-informed sources, and focus group discussions in person or online conversation with small groups of people to listen to their views on a product or a topic. You can also do the open-ended uh, questionnaires or survey questions, a text back in a survey that lets the respondent express their thoughts on the matter at hand freely, and the observational research. Here, observing people during the course of their habitual routines uh, to understand how they interact with the product, for example. Okay. So watching people in their natural environment, which later on I will ask you to do you know, as part of uh, 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 doing the qualitative research in how to get data. Okay. Sometimes I will ask you to just sit down uh, doon sa may uh, uh, entrance of SPS, some of you I'll ask to sit down in the canteen and try to put uh, uh, the describe me on. Some of you I'll be able to put probably in the admin at the gym or elsewhere in the school. Okay, so how to get the qualitative data? Okay. So why collect qualitative data? Okay. Qualitative survey questions can run the risk of being too vague. To avoid confusing your respondents, you may want to skew questions like, what do you think about our internet service? Instead, you could ask a close-ended question, quantitative question like in the following example. The internet service is reliable always, most often, about half the time, once, in a while, or never. And uh, for the quantitative data. Okay, so I'm just showing you the quantitative data, pero you'll be able to learn that in the next semester. So if you are working with a particular research design, the following expert or authors must be studied. So papakita ko na sa inyo, which is very important. Um, for example, for ground theory, you'll be using Burke's Millis, Charmaz, Glacier, Strauss, and Corbin. Uh, focus on ethnography. Tandaan niyo to si Spradley, Sunstein, Shiseri Strutter, or si Walcott. Okay. Do not forget, huh? si Spradley. Now for the feminological analysis, the most popular are the two, si Colizzi and si Georgie, Halston and Curbrium, Mostakas also. Uh, Smith Flowers and Largan and Van Manen. So it's either Colizzi, si Georgie, si Van Manen ang popular. So kasi pag-author, you have to understand 
how they do, how they analyze the data, the steps in doing research, and how to analyze it again. Uh, we can get that from the authors. And from the case study, we have state 1995. I forgot to tell you, Robert Yin. Okay, Robert Yin also is in the case study. Mixed methods, meaning you do qualitative and quantitative research. Uh, personally, I, I would not want you to do mixed method. You have to study both MUNA, quant, quality and quantity. Maybe when, you're, when you are done already with your master's or your PhD, you can explore doing mixed methods. But these are nice to know things. Cresswell, Plano Clark, Tasha, uh, Tasha Corey, and uh, Ted Lee. So I guess that is our, our uh, discussion for, for this meeting. Now, uh, for your activity, okay? Wait. For your activity, um, for this particular topic, which I will be collecting in uh, our face-to-face uh, -face classes, you need to be able to give me uh, you should be able to put this one in a uh, short bond paper. So you have to submit to me five qualitative topics, okay? five qualitative uh, research, the topics, research titles. Okay. So bibigyan yung lima, kung ano yung uh, qualitative uh, researches and five quantitative researches. Now from those a uh, five example, you have to determine kung anong particular type of, let's say, qualitative research design yun. Case study ba yan? Uh, grounded theory ba yan? Ethnography? Okay? Or case study ba yan? Pag quantitative, ganun rin. Anong klaseng quantitative research yan? Correlational ba yan? Comparative ba yan? Okay? So that would be your assignment. So you have to enumerate uh, five qualitative um, uh, researches, okay, titles, with uh, kung anong klaseng qualitative research yun, and five quantitative research at kung anong klaseng quantitative research yun. Okay? So, and uh, also, in the face-to-face -face, uh, discussion that we're going to have, uh, the topics, okay, the five topics, you have to present that, the specific topics for it, so yun yung gagawin natin for face-to-face. -face. So I think that would be it for today's meeting. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye, everyone.